what's going on y'all and welcome back to the a-ray show so for today's video it's going to be a really special one this is the first time in channel history i'm revealing my dividend growth portfolio i'm really pumped to show you guys the stocks that i hold and how it's worked for me i won't go super into detail on all the holdings and why i have them just because if i did the video would be like super long like an hour or two but you know definitely in the future i'll do it maybe i'll do it sector by sector or stock by stock but we'll have to see for the future for now, I'll show you guys the stocks I have, the allocation I have it at, and my strategy that I follow, and the goals I want to achieve. And one other thing, when I made this channel, I promised transparency, so with that, let's break down my portfolio. Words, before we get into my portfolio, let's go over a couple of things. So first, the background. So I started this portfolio July 1st of 2020. I started with $500. It's a whopping lump sum, I know. But yeah, I started with $500 and I decided to add $50 every single week. So I've added $50 every single week consistently and I haven't missed a single week. Here and there, I'd add a little bit more than $50, but for the most part, I stuck with just that $50 per week. So now let's talk about my goals and my strategy. And on a quick side note, everyone's going to have different goals, which means that everyone's going to have to have a different strategy to kind of cater to their own goals and things that they want to achieve. So let me give you guys more insight with my own personal goals. So my ultimate goal is that I want to be able to retire in 30 years. So right now I'm in my early 20s, which means that I'd like to retire in my late 40s to my early 50s. I want to achieve financial independence by living off my dividends. That's my ultimate goal, right? But in order to do that, I'm going to have to contribute $250 a week or about $13,000 a year. So that's my ultimate goal. You guys are probably wondering what the screen is that you guys have been staring at for quite a while now is. So this is like the overview for my portfolio. So you can see my current value is a little bit over $1,700. And remember, I did start off with $500 and $50 weekly since July 1st. So it's been about maybe five months and everything's been looking pretty good. So I'm happy with that. And you can see I've got $150 in gains and 15% return. So that's pretty good. But honestly, that actually looks really good. But the thing is, I did promise transparency and from like the last basically from November till now the markets have been extremely green because of the whole news on the vaccine and the post election news and because of all that. So don't think that, you know, my portfolio is super special and don't just copy it just because it's my portfolio. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not like a really good investor. I just want to be completely transparent with you guys. One of my older videos I talked about time in the market beats timing the market. There's going to be days where my portfolio is in the red and honestly, I have a lower gain. I have a loss, not a gain. So it's always going to be like that. And that's another thing to know with dividend growth investing. You don't want to be too sensitive to market fluctuations. It happens all the time in the stock market. Period. If your stocks are going up, that's a good thing. But if it's also going down, that's also a good thing just because you can put in more money and that will help you in the long term. Remember, this is a long term buy and hold strategy. So another thing is my earned dividends. So I've got ten dollars and 18 cents. And with those $10.18, I just reinvested right back into those dividend stocks. And with that, let me give you guys a little bit more about my portfolio overview before we get into individual stocks. So M1 Finance gives us yet another way to kind of look at your portfolio and kind of gauge how it's doing and how it's performed in the past. So you can see if I had my portfolio five years ago from this date, I would have performed at 111%. So I would have basically doubled my returns, which is amazing. But the cool thing is that doesn't even account for the dividends and the dividends reinvested. So that number would be a lot higher with those dividends. And so I've got about 45 holdings, which is kind of moderate or decent amount of holdings. Most dividend growth portfolios are going to have around 25 to 60 holdings. I'm still making adjustments and kind of weeding up the stocks that don't fit with my goals and my time horizon. So like once we get into my individual stocks, you'll see what I mean. So now you can see that my dividend yield is about 2.19%. It's pretty low for now, but my goal is to have my yield grow with me as I get older. And because my time horizon is 30 years, anywhere between a 1.5% to a 2.5% current dividend yield is a good starting current yield. I want my CAGR, which just means current annual growth rate of my dividends to be higher. So I chose that. I chose having this lower yield as opposed to having a higher yield because I want my current income of dividends lower just because I want to have my dividends grow with me as I get older over time. It's kind of like a trade off. So I'm trading in a current income currently for a higher and better performing growth in my dividends. And then lastly, I've got my expense ratio at a 0.02%, which just means that I have some ETFs in my portfolio. All right. And I know you guys have been waiting for this. So let's get right into my portfolio. 
All right, so let's get right into the portfolio. Oh, and real quick, if you guys notice these numbers are changing, it's just because I'm recording on multiple days. These videos take a long time to make, so if you guys appreciate it, or if you guys enjoy the video or found any value, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I'd appreciate that. So let's get right into it. So you can see that I've got nine slices, and it's pretty cool. I've got mine split up into sectors. So I've got all these sectors, and I've got the ETF sector. And it's pretty cool. I've, that's one of the cool things about M1 Finance. I've seen people split it up into really creative ways. I've seen people do it by risk factors, people doing it by income, and it's just pretty cool overall. But I've got mine into sectors just because it's a little bit easier for me to understand. So you can see that my highest allocation is towards the tech sector, and that's because tech sector has one of the lowest current yields, but it also has the most potential to grow. So the stocks in here have the highest stock appreciation rate. And on top of that, they also have one of the best CAGR rates out of all my other uh, sectors. So that's the reason why I have tech so high. And then I've got ETFs at 15% just because it's a little bit more stable and conservative. It's good to have like a nice little balance to your portfolio. Then I've got my consumer at 14%, my real estate at 11%, my industrials at 10%, my healthcare at 9%, my financials at 9%, uh, sorry, 10%, my utilities at 5%, and my telecom at 6%. Telecom right now is at 6% because most of these stocks in here will give me a good income currently, but as time grows, I want to bump up that number. So right now it's only 6% because I'm not really looking for the income right now. I'm looking for it for when I get closer to retirement age. So you guys will see that over time that these numbers will change a lot just because I'm making a lot of small adjustments here and there. So I'm assuming by the time I get closer to retirement age, because I've got stocks like AT&T that pay at a really high yield, this telecom sector, by the time I'm older and close to retirement age, it's probably going to be a little bit higher than 6%. Maybe it'll be 10%, maybe a little bit higher, but we'll have to see. So with that, let's get right into the stocks. All right, so this is my tech sector, and these are the stocks I've got in my tech sector. So I've got VGT, which is basically an ETF for tech stocks. I've got Apple, I've got Microsoft, I've got Texas Instruments, and then I've got Cisco. I won't break down every single stock and the reasons why I have them just because then the video would be way too long. I'll definitely break them down in a future video. I'll probably do it sector by sector, but this is more of like an overview of the holdings that I've got and, you know, just kind of seeing the allocation I've got from that. And then quickly, so I talked about trading trade offs. So I talked about why my yield is a lot lower than my growth. So you can see this is like a clear example of like the tech sector having a huge growth rate and a low dividend yield. So I'm kind of trading off that yield for that growth but it's gonna be worth it in the long run because this yield is gonna grow over time, which is gonna help me out in the future. Next up is the more conservative side to my portfolio. So these are all the ETFs. So you can see I have VUG, which is just kind of oriented more towards growth. I've got VTI, which is a total stock market, VOO, which is the S&P 500. So these are all like my safety measures. And then I've got VWO, which is for emerging markets, and then SPHD, which is like a high dividend yield. So all these numbers are kind of moderate. There's nothing too crazy about this. It's just more of, um, you know, it's kind of like a safety measure in my portfolio just in case one of my stocks does really bad in the future and I have to sell it at a loss. But I'm really not too worried about it. 82.95% um, in five years, that's great. 1.759% um, dividend yield. Like I said, nothing too crazy. Just basically it's a staple of my portfolio. So now we've got the consumer sector, and this is also one of my favorite sectors just because I know a lot about it compared to all the other sectors. So let's get right into it. So I've got Kimberly Clark, I've got Pepsi, I've got Coke, Nike, love Nike, I've got Walmart, Gap, and Target. And Gap is kind of an interesting one just because I kind of picked it up just because of Kanye West, and they have also recently suspended their dividend, which means that they kind of stopped doing that dividend, and I don't think they're going to do it until 2021. I just picked it up because of the whole Kanye news. And ever since I did pick it up, I picked up one share. That one share appreciated over 100%, which is amazing. So I might end up selling it in the future. We'll kind of have to see how it goes, but I only have 5%, so I'm not really too worried about that. And just a quick note on Pepsi and Coca-Cola. The reason I have Pepsi higher than Coca-Cola is because Pepsi is more growth oriented compared to Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola is more matured. So I'm not looking for that current yield or that current income, which Coca-Cola provides. I'm looking more for growth. So that's why I have Pepsi higher than I have for Coca-Cola. And then you guys can kind of see right here, my performance in the last five years, 82.78% accumulate more growth right now than I am for current income. So next up, we've got the real estate sector. And with this sector, I didn't really know anything about it. But as time went on, I learned more and more about this sector. And I can't, I'm really interested in the real estate. I, hopefully, I can get into it one day. But for now, I've only gotten into stocks. So let's get into my holdings. So I've got VNQ, which is an ETF for real estate. I've got O, 
All my homies love O. O is great. It's a monthly compounder. So instead of giving dividends semi-annually or quarterly, they give it monthly, which is great. I've got DLR. I've got AMT and Prologis. AMT is highly underrated. I just picked it up recently. And one cool thing about it is they raise their dividend every single quarter, which is amazing. It's probably one of the first companies I've ever seen do that. Instead of doing it, raising it every single year, they raise it every single quarter, which is awesome. And these are just the quick specs on um, my real estate sector. So you can see I'm up 80% over the last five years. I've got a kind of a high dividend yield, but um, yeah, other than that, it's pretty good. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with this sector. Next up is my financial sector. And my financial sector is pretty well balanced. I've got Visa, VFH, ADP, and Aflac. So I've got an insurance company. I've got a paycheck company. I've got a... I don't even know what you can call Visa. Visa is more of a technology company and I might move that on to my tech sector eventually. And then we've got VFH, which is just an index fund for all different types of financial, like banks and all that. I sold my banks just because I wasn't really sure which ones were going to be winners and which ones were going to be losers. I had Wells Fargo, which they have kind of a history. So I sold that. I have Citibank and I was thinking about JP Morgan, but I ended up selling. I ended up just getting VFH instead just because, you know, this way, I'll be able to have the winners and losers, and they'll kind of benefit me in the long run because I'll have, you know, a piece of every single stock. So I'm up 95.25% the last five years, which is pretty good. A nice low dividend yield. Like I said, Visa is one of those really great companies, and I might just move this over to the tech sector and lower my allocation to the financial sector to maybe 5 or 6%, just because I'm not really too high on it. Aflac is more of a current yield type of company, too. So yeah, nothing too amazing here, but I really like Visa. That's one of the greatest stocks in my financial sector. So next up, I've got industrials. So I've got 3M, I've got Waste Management, Lockheed Martin, Genuine Parts Co., Ford Motors, and Caterpillar. Ford is one of those ones that I might end up selling in the future. It's just giving me good growth for now. So I'll, I'll probably sell them in the future. They're not really paying a dividend right now. They cut it because of the whole pandemic. So I'm really waiting for that to come back. And if it doesn't end up coming back, then I'm probably going to sell it. But it does give me a good, you know, growth for now. But yeah, we'll have to see. And then this is kind of just the specs on him up 75% over the last five years. Pretty good. I've got six holdings with a 2.6% dividend yield. So yeah, it's a pretty good sector. Next up is the healthcare sector. In this sector, I've got a pretty good dividend yield on. I've got pretty good passive income on this one. So we've got Avgi, Johnson Johnson, CVS, Merck Co., UNH. And I'm sorry, I'm just quickly going through these just because the video is getting pretty long. And out of these, Abby is probably my favorite just because it has a nice yield. Johnson Johnson is reliable. They've been paying dividend and growing that dividend for quite a, some time now. So you can see I'm up 77%. And that yield is juicy, yo, 3.2%. That's juicy. I like it. Next up is the utility sector. And this sector I probably know the least about. I had to just pick it just because, you know, for the sake of diversity purposes, um, in order to determine what stocks I really wanted for this, I had to look at their financials and then I had to look at their dividends and their dividend growth potential. So like I said, I don't really know too much about this sector. I'm just kind of picking and choosing and hopefully I get lucky. Um, but it is a low percent of my portfolio. At, I think it was like 5%. So I'm not really too worried. Out of these ones, Next Era, Next Era Energy is probably the one I'm most high on. And also this is kind of skewed just because there's this giant drop off and that's because Next Era Energy actually had a reverse split or a forward split. So that kind of explains this whole drop off, but yeah, it's been performing pretty well nonetheless, so pretty happy with it. And last off is my telecommunication sector or my telecom sector, whatever you want to call it. And in that sector, I've got AT&T, Verizon, Qualcomm, and Disney. AT&T and Verizon are basically my hefty, heavy lifters for my dividends. They pay fat dividends, juicy. And then we've got Disney, which currently suspended their dividend. Um, overall, they're more of a recovery stock as of now, just because they stopped their dividend and they also have a consumer, their business, which where they have theme parks, they sell products. So that's kind of slowing down right now because of the whole pandemic. But at the same time, they also have a streaming service, which right now is probably their best asset. So as for now, I'll keep Disney as kind of a growth stock, but I'm expecting that dividend to come back eventually. So I'm pretty high on Disney. And then I like Qualcomm just because it's a nice 5G play. And then you can see overall the performance only 29.75% in growth. So like I mentioned before, it's going to be a trade off. So like the tech sector, they had a higher growth rate and a small yield. This is going to be kind of backwards. They're going to have a smaller growth rate and a higher yield. So as time goes on, I'm going to kind of have to lower my tech sector and 
hire my telecommunication sector. So it's just one of the cool things about my portfolio. It's really flexible and I'm open to changes. You know, the allocation is going to change over time. So that's all I've got for you guys for today for my portfolio reveal. Let me know what you guys think about my portfolio. Rate it 1 to 10 in the comments. Let me know what you guys think. Yo, you guys already got to give me that 10, please. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, let me know what you guys think. I'll probably do more videos on my portfolio from maybe monthly updates or somewhere around the ballpark. We'll have to see. And I'll definitely go more into detail on the sectors and the stocks I have them and why I have them. But yeah, that's in a future video. And I know this was a really long video, so I appreciate you guys for watching. If you guys found any value, please like, comment, and subscribe. I appreciate that a lot. And if you're new here, I just want to let you guys know that I have a podcast on NBA with my friends, and it's called the East Coast Browncast. So you can check us out on YouTube. We're right here. We're also on Apple and Google Podcasts. We're on Spotify, pretty much any platform that you can find. And yeah, with that, remember, everybody eats.